What's going on, YouTube nights? This is your man, Timo. Yeah, I know that was a little buck wild, but hey, man. Happy Saturday to you. That's right. Today is Saturday and a super rare comic book haul video. I've kind of been teasing this on my different social media accounts. Um, just jamming on some beats there. Had some time to kill. Went to the dentist today. Hit up my barber today. Waiting for the lady to come back when they go check out 21 Bridges with Black Panther. I'm at Chadwick Boseman. Uh, I've been kind of been teasing this haul, man. Last Saturday, I uh, went to Bakersfield. Hit up my homie. You guys know him on uh, Instagram. It's Swolverine. Uh, bodybuilder, power lifter, angry comic book collector, and citizen of Bakersfield. He said, yo, you got to come up here, man. Let's go check it out. And luckily... Uh, my old lady, her sister lives in Bakersfield, so I was like, hey, honey, let's go to Bakersfield for the day. We drove up Friday night, spent the night. She kicked it with her sister on uh, Saturday afternoon. I want my boy Swolverine over to the uh, Bakersfield Fairgrounds. Or, um, and this is very Bakersfield of it, that uh, Bakersfield Comic Con was in one building. In the back of it was a Renaissance Fair. And then in another building was a gun show. Very, very Bakersfield of it. But you know what? I will say this. I will go back to this show. Uh, it was a small show. Um, here's the incredible thing. This is the first time I've been to a show where there wasn't at least one Hulk 181. Not saying these dealers didn't have one, but I think they they catered to their audience. They knew who the type of uh, people that are gonna be there. And a lot of young kids, a lot of toy vendors, but there was about good, uh, I would say, six or seven vendors in, in a pretty small spot. It was the size of about a, a size of a grocery store, about half the size of what you would consider a regular grocery store, uh, like a Stater Brothers or a Lucky's or Albertsons, where the fuck you live. Um, so let's go to it. So I'm going to title this video, What I Got at Bakersfield Comic Con for $500. <laughs> um, so this is just a placeholder, by the way. Because uh, I went there, and as soon as we did the rounds, and this is part of uh, one of the collector series we'll talk about in the future. When I get to a Comic-Con, what I do is I walk the floor first, and then I come back, and I'll start making my deals. And what I'm not afraid to do is, when I make my first rounds around the Comic-Con floor, uh, and this was a pretty small place, so, you know, if they saw you once, they recognize you. Um is I'll, I'll set aside some books and I say, hey, can you hold these for me? I just got here. Let me walk around and I'll come back and I'll pay for them. And luckily the, the dealers there were, were pretty cool. I'd never seen them before since they were all local to like the, that area, Bakersfield, Fresno and whatnot. Um, my boy Bobby had known some of them. And, and at that point I knew this is gonna be, I really had to dig deep into those long boxes to be able to find anything. Um, but I was able to find some stuff. And you know what, I'm gonna tell you what, man. Not tooting my own horn or trying to uh, advertise my own uh, YouTube channel, but the long-term spec list playlist on the Lords of the Longbox YouTube channel and helped me out incredibly because I'll be honest with you, a lot of times if I'm not specifically looking for something, I won't know what all the damn long-term specs are that we got. So without further ado, let's show what I got at Bakersfield Comic Con for $500. And unlike other channels, what I'm going to do is show the uh, the biggest books first, at least in my estimation. Boom. Um, this is absolutely gorgeous. This is, I paid the most for this comic. Uh, end up being, I paid like, I think he wanted 200 for him. Then I talked about like 170 and then I threw together a stack of books and ended up being this and something else for a certain amount. So I, all in total, I went to three different dealers and let's just say everything I got for $500, man. So this is Silver Surfer number two. This is my second copy. The reason I got this is I wanted a high grade copy to go with my other, I have Silver Surfer one, three and four all graded at least 7.0 or 7.5. This is an absolutely gorgeous copy of this book, man. I don't know if you can see that, but it is super, super clean. Almost looks like it's pressed, but the guy said it was never pressed. I am going to keep this one, send it out to CGC. And to be honest with you, the other copy is about a 6.0, 7.0. I'm going to put that on the Lord's auction on Black Friday. This 
is hard to find in the wild, man. This is the first ever uh, English comic book adaption, adaptation, excuse me, of the Macross Saga. If you remember, this book got kind of hot a while ago. This is Comico uh, number one, Macross Saga. This is a really gorgeous VF copy, man. I, I think I got this for like 15 bucks or something. So, so it's one of those shows where you really, in order for me to find anything that I really wanted, I, I went to the long-term spec list that we've been talking about, and I got some stuff that are like, I would say, minor spec books. But these two are probably, this is the biggest book of the haul of them all. The Server Surfer books are super, super hot right now. Very expensive. And if you want modern relevance, there you go. See, your boy knows DC. First appearance of Batwoman is his first appearance of, you know, Sirens or Gotham City Sirens or whatever it is. Uh, 20 on this, 20 on this. I will tell you this. I didn't pay any of these cover prices uh, or things that uh, typically what I do is try to get a deal. You know, I don't just buy one book. It's kind of hard to say, hey, man, we take, you know, 15 bucks for this $20 book. But if you buy four or five books from them, they'll give you a better deal. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad to have these in my copy. I know Dustin Wynn personally. I'm going to probably have him sign this at either ECC or WonderCon or Long Beach. He goes to all those shows. Both of these are near mint condition. Kind of happy to have those. So this goes to the long-term spec list. And I'll keep it going in a DC theme. Got these both for a great deal. This is near mint. This Sandman copy. This is uh, first Silver Age appearance. Uh, the Sandman classic Jock Kirby. Uh, Simon and Kirby. There you go. I, want, I, want to, I always wanted to see the inside to see if it says Jack Kirby did the writing. Man, this is super clean. So, edited and drawn by Jack Kirby, script by Joe Simon. Talk about a power duo of comic book creators. Joe Simon, Jack Kirby. Look at that. Uh, this is Shade the Changing Man, the first appearance of Shade the Changing Man. This is another high-grade copy. Uh, both these were on our long-term spec list for stuff that's going to be happening. Uh, I believe that Sandman book, they are going to talk about using Sandman in the Sandman Netflix series. All right, next up are two of the horror spec books we've been talking about. This is Man-Thing number three, the first appearance of Fool Killer. That was a recent spec, I do believe. And this is Adventures into Fear number 11, or titled Fear, if you look in the guide. Um, this is the first appearance of Jennifer Kale, who is also very prominent in the supernatural world of Marvel. So I'll tell you guys a story later on. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't want it to sound too surf serving but both of these are in great condition, too. So once I started getting to uh, our long-term spec list stuff, you know, and that's why I like to tell a lot of people, you know, on these long-term specs, you know, don't break the bank on them, but it makes collecting f more fun. Uh, you can go to a show that doesn't have a bunch of bangers and AF-15s and Hulk 181s. Just to have a good time, man. I got these for all these was for five hundred dollars. But uh, but the most was that that Silver Surfer number two book is probably is the paid the most for it, right around one seventy. So everything else yeah, you're seeing here rounded off to about five hundred dollars. This I got for like a buck. This is the first appearance of Static, still in the poly bag. My boy Bobby is the one that pointed out to me. He goes, look, it's right there. Uh, this, of course, this is a gorgeous copy here, too. I got this for dirt cheap. This is the first appearance of Frankie Ray. One color break right there. Right there. Oh, that's pretty. It may be pinged out, but there's color breaking in it. But I'm stoked. It's like my third copy because I originally collected this John Byrne run. First appearance of Frankie Ray as the Herald to... Galactus as Nova. Uh, these two I got just because, man. Uh, because they were cheap and they were sitting there and I, I dig it. Champions number one. Very, very goofy team of, of heroes back in the day in the Bronze Age. I'm at Hercules, Iceman, Black Widow, Angel, and Ghost Rider. I mean, who would have thought about that? Great near man copy. Uh, this I got because it's a Bronze Age tale. It's a Bronze Age book. It's a number one and it's high grade, which for me, I'll collect them all day long because I love first appearances. I love weird wonky tales. Matter of fact, it says weird right in the title. Weird Wonder Tales number one. That is pretty cool, man. Both solid books. Let's 
So, I got two more of these. That one says 40, but I know I didn't pay for that. I wonder if this is the old bags. Anyway, Master of Kung Fu, King Size Annual Number 1, the first meeting of Shang-Chi and Iron Fist. I mean, I don't know if I'm a victim of our own spec and this price is that because of that or it's just that way. Even it's got a cool date stamp on there, but both of, this one is really high grade here, man. I'm really stoked to get this one in this grade. Um, once again, it's the uh, double bound. I always forget that. Double bound size, whatever. I kind of got crazy on these too. This is just a, a recent spec that we did. And I saw them everywhere, so I just bought them because they were cheap. Um, I remember this guy, His it says $20 on there, but he was basically doing like 50% off or some shit. But this is a awesome Art Adams cover. First appearance, first issue of Long Shot. So nice. I got him thrice. One may be up for auction this Friday. You see any doubles and triples. Also, I got another copy of First Parent to Jennifer Kale. This is a lower grade. This is a $12 book. End up getting like for eight bucks, but you can see there's a lot of uh, color breaks on the spine. Also got this. It's my third or fourth copy. Special Marvel Edition number 16, the second appearance of Shang-Chi, the master of the Kung Fu's. Dope. As soon as I saw this, I was like, you know what? I'm going to grab that because it's my favorite character. But yeah, I've been... I was really hard specking on the Marvel horror books. I was really digging deep for like man things and uh, wow, that sounded kind of nasty. But anyway, holla at your boy Kappa. These next are really interesting books because um, I got them all for like super cheap. Um, me and my boy Bobby, my boy Swolverine, we went digging into this guy who had these all these random books for like a buck, and so we said he had a whole box of Wizard half issues, man. So this is the wizard half issue. Does it have it? Ah, this one doesn't. This is, of course, is she. Look at that awesome Oliver Olivetti. Does this have it? Yes, it does. Cool. Because we were looking for him that had the certificate of, certificate of authenticity. Server Sapphire, her half was available only through a special offer in Wizard, the Comics Wizard number 79. Each copy is part of a limited edition, which is distri which was distributed and a special protective holder with a copy of this certificate. That's the special holder, by the way. It's just kind of the th really thick kind of uh, mylar, but that's still dope. And this, uh The reason it says three on here because they're three bucks each, but if you bought like two, you, you got them for a dollar fifty each. If that doesn't make sense, but look at that, dude. Gorgeous Michael Turner cover for Fathom. And Boo Yao. I love little things like that. My boy Otto would said linear. Certificate Authenticity. This is Fathom Half Issue. Was available only through a special offer in Wizard, the comics magazine number 122. Each copy is part of a limited edition, which is distributed with special Wizard Protective Holder. I guess this is the Wizard Protective Holder, but that is absolutely gorgeous. He also had these books, all these for a dollar, man. And it were basically all image first issues. Cyber Force number one. Uh, this is the first Wetworks, I believe... That's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous Jim Lee cover. Look at that shit. Ah, uh, shiny, shiny people. Wildcats number one. More Jim Lee. And then here's another Blade half issue. Don't know why I got it. I just thought they were cool because they all had the certificate of authenticity in them. And the special wizard <laughs> sleeve. So that's it, boys and girls. Nothing earth shattering per se. But I had a good time. I was hanging out with good peoples. My homie Bobby was there. He went back the next day to get some more stuff. So uh, I will say this. Bakersfield Comic Con is a throwback to smaller shows that, that doesn't have all the crazy fanfare. A lot of kids there. So the dealers were like, hey, kid, you want this? Give me a buck. So it was very cool, man. I dug it. It had like a family vibe to this Bakersfield Comic Con, man. I say... Lord's approved. We will be back. I'll be back next year. My man swove rain and we'll go deep digging in those long boxes, man. Cause I think I had a good time, man. It was a good day to spend a Saturday sat shit. Actually, I probably finished the show in like two hours, maybe three hours. Cause it'll end up going to the movies right after where we stayed in Bakersfield. Me and my lady and her sister went to uh, 
have dinner at Frugetti's Italian joint and we went to this uh, grill movie theater and we saw Ford versus Ferrari. Holy cow. I should do a review on that movie because it is excellent, man. My what I so far I have Ford of Ferrari should be up for film of the year because it was that entertaining, man. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little show and tell. Uh, that's it, man. We will see you guys Wednesday where we're going to do, I got a long-term spec list for DC stuff related to Justice Society and Black Adam. Make sure you peep out the show on Wednesday because after the long-term spec list, me, Dark Side Jedi, Otto, maybe King of the Golden State, we're going to go over and do a brief preview of all the comics that we'll have up for auction on Friday. Big, huge Black Friday sale coming up. Don't miss it. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. No, just kidding. Friday, Friday, Friday. Black Friday. We're going to go live at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And have a good old comic book auction. The third annual Lords of the Long Box Black Friday sale. So uh, that's it, boys and girls. Hope you enjoyed it. So make sure you subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. And hit that notification button. Because you never know when I go live. And if you don't, if you're not subscribed and notified you know, for notifications, you won't know when I go live like I did Friday night to drop the JSA stuff. So... See you guys real soon and enjoy the rest of your weekend and keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.